Chapter 14 Green buds softened the bushes, and for the first time in moons, the forest seemed to glow with the promise of life and warmth. Blue paw padded beneath the towering pines, their flat needles silky beneath her pads. She breathed deeply, opening her mouth to taste the faint tang of new leaf. It wouldn't be long before the forest was alive with the song of birds and the rustle of prey, and the lean moons would be just a memory. What about here? Sweetpaw circled a tree, looking into the branches. I think I can see a nest. Sunfall and Small Ear followed her gaze. Abandoned, Sunfall sighed. Suddenly a twitch of movement bobbed in the distance. Squirrel! Bluepaw dashed away stealthily, joy rising in her belly as she raced between the trees. The squirrel flashed through the forest with its fluffy tail billowing behind. Bluepaw ran as lightly as she could, hoping to catch it before it realized it was being chased. The moment it heard her, it might scoot up a tree, and the pines were too smooth and branchless to climb. She swerved past a bramble, fragrant with new growth, and found that she was slowly gaining. She pressed back the urge to run full pelt in case the thump of her paws gave her away. Her mouth watered. The squirrel would be a delicious treat for her still hungry clanmates. Another few tail lengths and she would be close enough to pounce. She controlled her breathing, measuring each breath so that she would be ready. She could already taste the kill. Now! She pushed hard against the ground, surging forward, sprinkling needles in her wake. The squirrel ran harder, trailing fear scent now. Eyes fixed on its gray back, Blue Paw changed her pace, preparing to leap. Suddenly the squirrel sprang upward. A wooden fence loomed ahead and the squirrel disappeared over the top. Too late, Blue Paw slowed to a halt, her flank slamming into the fence. Mouse dung. Frustration surged through her. Where am I? She sniffed the air. This wasn't ThunderClan territory. Warm, strange smells mixed with the sour tang of Thunderpath. Blinking, she realized she had crossed the border and was beside Two Leg Place. She had been close to this area before while on Border Patrol, but had never strayed near the fence. She turned, her heart sinking. She wouldn't dare follow the squirrel beyond there. No clan cat was allowed to hunt outside the territory. Hey, a voice called down from above her. Spinning around, Blue Paw saw a fat ginger tom balanced on a branch overhanging the fence. She tensed, her hackles rising, but the tom just gazed at her with round, calm eyes. You don't live around here. His voice was as soft as his pelt looked. He tipped his head to one side. Are you one of those forest cats? Blue Paw thought for a moment. Should she leave? What would her clanmates say if she spoke to a kitty pet? She began to back away. Don't go, the Tom called. I want to know what it's like. What what's like, Blue Paw echoed. Being a forest cat. The Tom crept along the branch but didn't climb down. Who feeds you? We feed ourselves. The Tom stared blankly. We hunt, Blue Paw explained. Doesn't he know anything? Mice? And voles and squirrels? You just missed a squirrel, the Tom commented. It came over the fence. I know, Blue Paw flicked her tail crossly. Had this cat just watched it run past without even trying to catch it? Lazy mouse brain. It sounds like hard work, the Tom observed. What do you do when it's cold? Don't you freeze? Our dens are warm. Blue Paw wondered why she was bothering to answer such stupid questions. Your dens? The Tom narrowed his eyes. Are they like... Baskets? Baskets? What was he talking about? Blue Paw! Pine Star's sharp mew made her jump. What was the Thunder Clan leader doing there? 
she spun around to see him stalking toward her. I, I, hot with embarrassment, she tried to think of a good explanation for being there. She decided the truth would be simplest. I was chasing a squirrel, she confessed. I didn't realize I'd crossed the border. Pine Star glared at her. So why are you talking to a kitty pet? He flashed a warning glance at the Tom. Was Pine Star going to attack? The Tom gazed calmly back. He's too dumb even to run away. Come on. Pine Star's mew was harsh. Why was he so angry? She was only there by accident. He started talking to me. She defended herself. Pine Star hissed as claws scrabbled against wood and a second kitty pet leaped from the fence to the tree branch and crouched beside the Tom. This was a gray she-cat, even softer and plumper than the Tom. Pine Star turned and shouldered his way past a bramble, beckoning Blue Paw with a sharp flick of his tail. She followed, glancing back at the cats. My name's Jake, the Tom called as she padded away. Next time you can see my nest. No way, Blue Paw shivered. She would never set Paw in a kitty pet nest. She hurried after Pine Star, wondering why he was still bristling. Are kitty pets dangerous? She asked. Dangerous? He turned on her. Don't be a mouse brain. We could have shredded that one. Why didn't we? She wondered. He didn't cross the border. Pine Star padded on, the fur rippling along his spine. Blue Paw glanced back again, confused. Did kitty pets ever cross the border? Why choose to stay in Two Leg Place instead of living free in the forest? She wanted to ask Pine Star, but he was staring ahead, his gaze furious. Don't go there again, Pine Star growled. You're a clan cat, not a kitty pet. As they crossed back into ThunderClan territory, Blue Paw recognized Sunfall's pelt flashing orange among the trees. There you are. The deputy hurried to meet them, looking relieved. Small Ear and Sweet Paw were following, each carrying a fledgling. We thought you'd gotten lost in Two Leg Place, he meowed. Blue Paw lashed her tail. I'd never go there. I just got caught up in chasing that squirrel. Did he think she was a mouse brain like those kitty pets? Blue Paul was acutely aware of the hopeful faces that watched the hunting patrol pad back into camp. Small Ear and Sweet Paw had their tiny fledglings, and Sunfall had caught a scrawny mouse near the top of the ravine. But she had caught nothing, and her ears twitched with guilt. You'll have to go out again at dawn, Sunfall told her. She looked at her paws, ashamed. I nearly caught a squirrel. Nearly doesn't feed the clan, Sunfall reminded her. She had disappointed him. She just hoped Pine Star wouldn't tell him she'd been talking to a kitty pet instead of hunting. She glanced at the Thunder Clan leader. He had padded to his den, and now his tail was disappearing through the lichen covering. He'd hardly said a word on the trek back. Speckletail stared at the meager pile of prey. I'm just glad there are no kits to feed. She glanced anxiously across the clearing to where Lion Paw and Golden Paw were practicing battle moves, their pelts following the line of every bone. But our apprentices still need to grow. I'll catch something tomorrow, Blue Paw promised. Even though New Leaf was tantalizingly near, it would take a moon to fatten the clan when prey started to run again. The only fat cat in ThunderClan now was Leopardfoot, whose belly seemed to swell while the other cats grew thinner. Blue Paw watched the mottled warrior, dozing beside the nettle patch in the weak leaf bare sunshine. Was she secretly eating prey while she hunted? How come she was so plump when every other cat was hollow with hunger? The gorse barrier shivered as Thistlepaw padded in with Adderfang. The Spikeford apprentice looked even more smug than usual. Blue Paw scowled. He was holding a shrew in his jaws. He carried it to the fresh kill pile and dropped it, flicking his tail with a flourish. Big deal, 
Blue Paul wanted to tell him that a bitter shrew wouldn't fill his clanmates' bellies. It would only wrinkle their tongues. Snowpaw nosed her way out of the apprentice's den. She must have heard Thistlepaw return. But to Blue Paw's surprise, Snowpaw ignored him. Catch anything? She was heading for Blue Paw. Blue Paw shook her head. Sunfall says I have to go out again at dawn. I'll come with you. Blue Paw blinked. Snowpaw hadn't hunted with her in a moon. You don't have to, she mewed. She didn't want her sister's pity. I want to, Snowpaw replied. We haven't been out together for ages. Blue Paw's claws pricked with suspicion. Are you fighting with Thistlepaw? No. Snowpaw sat down, her ears pricked as though surprised. I can be friends with both of you, you know. Blue Paw shrugged, unconvinced. As long as Snowpaw didn't expect her to be friends with Thistlepaw, that was just fine. The clattering of branches woke Blue Paw. Cold dawn light filtered into the den and the ferns rustled in the wind. She fought the urge to tuck her nose under her paw and go back to sleep. She'd promised Sunfall. Shivering, she nosed Snowpaw curled in the nest beside her. Do you still want to come hunting? She whispered. Lionpaw, Goldenpaw, and the others were still fast asleep, their gentle snores filling the den. Snowpaw raised her head and blinked open her eyes. Of course. She yawned and stretched, arching her back till her legs quivered. Blue Paw gave her chest and paws a quick wash to wake herself up, then tiptoed out of the den. The wind outside prickled against her fur and roared in the branches overhead. She tensed against the cold. Please let us catch something, she prayed to Star Clan. The clearing was empty. Outside the gorse tunnel, Thrush Pelt huddled against the barrier as he stood guard, Pelt fluffed up and ears flattened against the chilly wind. You're up early, he shivered. Hunting, Blue Paw mewed. May Star Clan guide your paws, Thrush Pelt called after them as they headed for the ravine. As they scrambled up the rocky cliff, the wind tugged their fur. At the top, it roared like the thunder path, shaking the trees to their roots. Which way? Blue Paw asked. What? Where shall we hunt? Blue Paw called louder. The forest's thickest near the Shadow Clan border, Snowpaw suggested. Let's try there. She bounded into the trees and Blue Paw followed. The thick trunks creaked around them as they ran, and the forest floor felt damp and cold under Paw. They slowed as the forest began to thicken. Blue Paw gazed into the branches in hopes of a bird they could track and Snowpaw scanned the drifts of old leaves for signs of scurrying prey. Suddenly, Bluepaw caught a scent. Rabbit, she whispered. What? Snowpaw's eyes opened wide. Rabbits were rare in the forest. They lived on the moorland. Excitement pulsed through Bluepaw as she tasted the air. It was definitely rabbit. It would feed half the clan. She whipped her head around, searching the scrub. There, a white tail bobbed underneath a bramble. She pressed Snowpaw into a crouch with her tail and began to creep forward over the damp forest floor. The rabbit bobbed out from under the bush and headed along a small trail between a swath of ferns. Blue Paw and Snowpaw followed, quickening their pace as the rabbit began to pick up speed. Had it caught their scent? Something must have spooked it because it broke into a dash and began racing through the forest. Blue Paw pelted forward. She wasn't going to lose this one. It dived under bushes and through patches of bracken. Blue Paw swerved and skidded, keeping up, the white bobtail always in sight. She was going to catch it. She could almost taste it. The forest sloped upward as a bank reared ahead of them. She would have it by the time it reached the top. All of a sudden, the rabbit disappeared down a hole. Blue Paw skidded to a halt. Mouse stung. We have to follow it, she told Snowpaw as her sister caught up. Down there? Panting, Snowpaw stared down the dark opening in the bank. They had been taught never to follow prey underground. Only Star Clan knew what might be waiting in the darkness, 
and some burrows went on so far it would be easy to get lost and never find a way out. Blue Paw sniffed at the hole. The air smells fresh, she announced. There must be another hole nearby. Maybe it just darted through and popped out somewhere else. Snowpaw stared, unconvinced. We have to catch it, Blue Paw insisted. It's the best piece of prey the clan has found in moons. Without waiting for an answer, she squeezed into the hole. Chapter 15 As Blue Paw scrambled into the darkness, cold earth pressed against her flank. She could hear Rabbit Paw scrabbling ahead. Blind in the blackness, she followed her nose, feeling the sides of the tunnel with her whiskers. The scent of Rabbit was so strong, her mouth watered. It drew her on, even though the burrow sloped downward into the dark, airless earth. I have to catch that rabbit. Losing the squirrel still pricked her conscience. She pushed away the fear growing in her belly. We should go back, Snowpaw whispered behind her, before we get lost. We can't get lost, Bluepaw hissed. There's only one tunnel. She padded onward. Relieved when the burrow began to slope upward, and the fresh scents of forest began to mingle once more with the musty odor of rabbit and soil. She could taste stone and lichen and the tart tang of pines. They were near snake rocks. Daylight filtered into the tunnel ahead, and she quickened her pace. Once out in the open, the rabbit could head anywhere, and its scent would be hard to follow in such windy weather. Blue Paw burst from the burrow and paused to taste the air as Snow Paw popped out behind her. Can you see it? Blue Paw whispered, concentrating on the flavors bathing her tongue. Her pelt pricked. She could smell rabbit. She could also smell blood. And the stench of fox. Star Clan, help us! Snow Paw's terrified gasp sounded behind her. Across the small clearing in front of them, Blue Paw saw the fox. It stood with its bony shoulders squared, the rabbit dangling dead in its jaws. A fierce gust of wind shook the trees and the forest flashed with lightning. It lit up the fox, throwing his shadow against the dark wall of snake rocks. Thunder cracked. The fox snarled and dropped the rabbit, turning its hungry gaze toward them. Snowpaw's shriek sent Bluepaw pelting up the bank, with Snowpaw's white pelt flashing a tail length behind. There was no way Bluepaw was letting the fox pursue them underground, in its own territory. They hurtled through the trees, ducking through brambles and swerving around Bracken. It's following us! Snowpaw's mew was a terrified whimper. Bluepaw could hear the fox thundering after them, its paws shaking the ground. She didn't dare look back. She could hear it slither on leaves, only tail lengths behind, never pausing for a moment. The forest was lit up again as lightning flashed and thunder exploded overhead. Blue Paw shrieked as she felt hot breath on her heels and pushed on faster. The stench of fox breath bathed her, and she heard its jaws snap a whisker from her tail. Up ahead, Snowpaw plunged over the ravine. It would never follow them down there. Blue Paw hurtled after, relief flashing as she sent stones rattling down the rocks. A thump sounded behind her. She glanced over her shoulder. The fox had jumped down after them. It was racing along the trail, a tail length behind. Star Clan, save us! Blue Paw wailed, praying her clanmates would hear and come to their rescue. Slithering down a boulder, she crashed after Snowpaw, who ducked out of her way and pelted the last length down the tumble of stones. Come on, she screeched. But Blue Paw was already half sliding, half falling down behind her. Nearly there. The camp entrance was within sight. They would be safe beyond the gorse tunnel. Panic shot afresh through Blue Paw. What if it follows us through? Lionpaw and Goldenpaw would be playing in the clearing. They would be easy prey for a fox. She had led it there. She must stop it. As Snowpaw pelted through the gorse tunnel, shrieking a warning, Bluepaw skidded to a halt and turned. 
The fox leaped at her and she reared on hind legs, ready to swipe at its snarling jaws. She didn't think about being brave or risking her life. She just knew the fox could not reach the camp. The sky flashed, and a great crack sounded tail lengths above. Blue Paul looked up. Lightning! A splintered branch fell between her and the fox and crashed onto the forest floor, alive with licking yellow flames. The fox yelped in surprise as the branch barely missed it. It whirled around in panic and scrambled back up the ravine. Her heart pounding, Blue Paw stared at the branch. It crackled in front of her nose, the heat searing her whiskers and scalding her muzzle. Frozen with shock, she stared until teeth grasped her scruff and tugged her back. You'll get yourself killed. Sunfall's growl brought her to her senses as he spat out her neck fur. The gorse barrier will catch light. Speckletail's panicked mew sounded from behind. The clan cats were streaming from the camp, their eyes wide with horror. The branch was burning so ferociously, Blue Paw felt her pelt tingle. If the gorse caught fire, the flames would sweep through the camp, engulfing every den. Star Clan, help us! Small Ear's desperate cry rose above the crackling flames. Please, Blue Paw begged silently. The storm crashed overhead and rain pelted down, driving through the canopy, pounding the bushes, thundering on the forest floor. The branch crackled and hissed as the rain doused the flames until nothing but a charred log fizzled in front of the astonished clan. Wow. Lionpaw's excited mew broke the silence. What are you doing out here? Speckletail shooed him inside. I wanted to see it burn, he complained. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Slowly, Blue Paw realized that Sunfall was talking to her. She dragged her gaze from the branch and stared blankly at her mentor. Her heart slowed as she took a huge gulp of air. It stank of smoke and made her cough. Come on, Sunfall meowed. Let's get you to Goosefeather. I'm here. The medicine cat was standing at the entrance of the tunnel, his eyes round, the fur bristling along his spine. He seemed mesmerized by the smoke rising from the extinguished branch, and his mew sounded far away. I'll take her to the medicine den. Wordlessly, he escorted her to his soft, grassy clearing. Wait here, he murmured, disappearing into the crack in the rock. As her shock eased, Blue Paw's whiskers and muzzle began to sting. She backed away when Goosefeather returned, holding an ointment-soaked leaf in his jaws. Will it hurt? she asked. It will soothe the pain, he promised softly. She held still as he gently smeared the ointment over her muzzle. His eyes seemed to be searching hers, but she couldn't figure out what he was trying to see. Will I be scarred? She asked nervously. Goosefeather shook his head. The fur on your nose is just singed, he reassured her. It'll grow back in a moon. Then why were his eyes glittering with worry? Maybe I'm imagining it. Suddenly, Goosefeather leaned closer. Like fire, you will blaze through the forest, he hissed. What? Blue Paw flinched away. Had he gone mad? The burning branch was a sign from Star Clan. His eyes glittered. You are fire, Blue Paw, and you will blaze through the forest. Alarmed, Blue Paw backed away. What was he talking about? But beware, she stiffened. Even the most powerful flames can be destroyed by water. What do you mean? I'm telling you what the burning branch meant, he growled. Don't be silly. This was the cat who had told his clan that a vole's fur meant they should attack Wind Clan. And look what had happened. Snowpaw came bounding in. Are you all right? She sniffed at Blue Paw's nose, wrinkling her own. What did he put on it? Comfrey and honey. Goosefeather's voice had returned to normal. 
It'll soothe the pain and stop infection. You were so brave, Snowpaw mewed. Her tail was flicking excitedly as she circled Bluepaw. I couldn't believe it when I ran into the camp and you weren't with me. I thought the fox had got you. But when I came out again, there you were, facing it. And then the branch fell down and you didn't move? You looked like a real warrior. Hush, Goosefeather silenced her. Weed whiskers in that nest. He nodded to a gap hollowed in the ferns. He's recovering from bellyache. I don't want him to be disturbed. Snowpaw dipped her head. Sorry. Out, both of you, Goosefeather ordered briskly. It was as though he hadn't mentioned a prophecy at all. Bluepaw wondered if she'd imagined it, or if he was just playing a joke on her. She turned and followed Snowpaw from the den. As she padded down the fern tunnel, a voice sounded in her ears. You are fire, Bluepaw. Fear water. She whipped around to see if Goosefeather was following, but his speckled gray back was only just visible at the far side of the clearing as he checked on Weed Whisker. Spooked, Bluepaw hurried to catch up to Snowpaw. Stormtail was waiting for them in the clearing. His eyes gleamed as Bluepaw joined them. You faced a fox. He sounded genuinely pleased, but his expression darkened as he went on. But you're not a warrior yet. So, no more fox fighting on your own. Before Bluepaw could respond, Lionpaw raced over with Goldenpaw on his heels. I wish I'd been outside. I would have fought off that fox. He fluffed up his fur and growled. Snowpaw's whiskers twitched in amusement. But Bluepaw's mind was on Goosefeather's bizarre prophecy. Could it really be true? You are fire? You will blaze through the forest? Did that mean she would one day lead ThunderClan? And how could water destroy her? She wasn't a river clan cat. She would never go near water apart from jumping the smallest stream. Stormtail's mew broke into her thoughts. Adderfang's leading a patrol to make sure the fox has gone. Stay in camp until they report back. Bluepaw nodded as Stormtail turned and padded away. Are you okay? Snowpaw's concerned mew broke into her thoughts. Did Goosefeather give you anything for the shock? Bluepaw shook her head. Something's bothering you. Bluepaw scanned the camp, looking for a quiet corner where they could talk. Perhaps Snowpaw could help her make sense of Goosefeather's words. Come with me. She led Snowpaw to the nursery and slipped behind it. What is it? Snowpaw sat down. Why are we hiding? I wanted to ask you about something. Bluepaw wondered how she could tell Snowpaw about the prophecy when she wasn't even sure of it herself. Snowpaw leaned forward, lowering her voice. What? Do, Bluepaw searched for the right words. Do you think, this is impossible. Do you think I'm, Special? Snowpaw broke into a purr. Well, of course. You're the best sister in the world. Bluepaw shook her head, frustrated. That's not what I meant. What else could you mean? Is there something wrong with you? Did Goosefeather find something when he checked your burns? Bluepaw dug her claws in the ground. She would have to be direct. Goosefeather said the burning branch was a sign. A sign? Snowpaw's eyes grew wide as an owl's. From StarClan? Bluepaw nodded. What did it mean? What did he tell you? Does Pine Star know? Snowpaw blasted her with questions. He said that I would blaze through the forest like fire. He's mad as a hare. But what if he's right? Do you think it means I stand out somehow? I don't even know what that means. Snowpaw backed away, looking alarmed now. And you know what his prophecies are like. It was his stupid prophecy that killed Moonflower. You don't actually believe him, do you? He also said that water would destroy me. Snowpaw flattened her ears. 
He's got no right to scare you like that. How dare he? The fur rose on her shoulders. Don't take any notice. His prophecies are worthless. You won't be destroyed by water. You're not a River Clan cat. How could water harm you? Don't listen to a word of it. Shocked, Blue Paw stared at her sister. Was it really so impossible that she was special? What was wrong with believing that she might one day lead the clan? Snowpaw had seemed eager enough to hear about the prophecy until she found out it involved Blue Paw. You don't believe it then? Snowpaw tipped her head to one side. Goose feather's an idiot, she meowed. Take no notice. Don't let it worry you. Worry me? Why couldn't she see? If this prophecy is true, it might be the most important thing that has ever happened to me. But Snowpaw had moved on. There was something I wanted to talk to you about, too. Blue Paw blinked. Okay. It's about Thistlepaw. Thistlepaw? I wish you would make more of an effort to like him. Why? He likes himself enough for both of us. Blue Paw stiffened. In fact, you like him enough for the both of us. Don't be like that. Blue Paw was already turning away. I don't have to like that arrogant weasel just because you do, she mewed. Blue Paw, Snow Paw called after her. But Blue Paw didn't want to hear. Why couldn't they be like they were in the battle on Sunning Rocks when they had fought side by side, closer than two blades of grass, each looking out for the other? Couldn't Snowpaw at least try to understand how Bluepaw felt about Goosefeather's prophecy? Angrily, Bluepaw padded back to the clearing. She had wanted to talk about what those words might mean, not to discuss Thistlepaw. Am I really destined to lead ThunderClan? Chapter 16 Blue Paw, from this moment you will be known as Blue Fur. StarClan honors your bravery and your strength, and we welcome you as a full warrior of ThunderClan. Serve your clan well. Blue Fur fought to keep her paws still as Pine Star touched her head with his muzzle, and her clanmates began to cheer. Blue Fur! Snow Fur! Blue Fur! Snow Fur! Snow Fur pressed against her. We're warriors, she whispered excitedly. Happiness flamed like a shooting star inside Blue Fur. She looked around the clan at the familiar faces, proud to be part of them, warmed by the kindness shining in their eyes. Stormtail stood up beside Dappletail, and lifting his chin, he called his daughter's names loudly to the darkening sky. He's telling Moonflower. The thought struck Blue Fur's heart like a honeyed thorn, soothing, yet painful. If only Moonflower had been among her clanmates to watch this moment. But she is among her clanmates, in Star Clan. The new leaf evening was warm, and the camp was filled with bird song, as though even the birds were thankful for the warmth and new life that had sprung in the forest. The fresh scent of prey and new growth swirled on the breeze. In the tradition of our ancestors, Snow Fur and Blue Fur will sit vigil until dawn and guard the camp while we sleep, Pine Star announced. Blue Fur dipped her head. As the clan began to melt away into their dens, she noticed with relief that Weed Whisker was beginning to fatten up. He and Leopardfoot were always first at the fresh kill pile now that it was rich with prey again. Leopardfoot had recently moved into the nursery while she waited to have Pine Star's kits. It turned out that she hadn't been eating extra prey to get fat after all. She took White Eye with her for company and to help chase away the chill that had crept into the bramble den which had been empty for so long. The whole clan was pleased that new kits were only a moon away. It just doesn't feel right when you could get all the way to the dirt place without tripping over a kit or two, Lark Song had commented earlier. Even Mumblefoot was looking forward to kits. It's been moons since anyone attacked my tail, he'd rasped wistfully. As the night seeped in, the clearing emptied out until only Blue Fur and Snow Fur were left alone in the dark. Silently they sat, 
snow first scanning the camp, eyes and body alert, clearly taking her oath to guard her clanmates very seriously. While Blue Fur gazed up at Silverpelt, wondering which of the countless stars was Moonflower. By the time dawn began to pale the sky, she was struggling to keep her eyes open. Her body was stiff from sitting so long. The lichen at the entrance to Pine Star's den twitched, and the Thunder Clan leader padded out. He glanced at the sky, washed pink by pale sunrise. Get some sleep, he meowed softly, as he passed Bluefur and Snowfur. Relieved, Bluefur stretched. Snowfur yawned. Where's he off to so early? She wondered, as Pine Star slipped out the camp tunnel. It's New Leaf, Bluefur replied. I guess even leaders enjoy a little dawn hunting once the prey starts to run. Out of habit, she turned her paws toward the apprentice's den. Teeth nipped her tail gently. Hey, mouse brain, Snowfur purred. We sleep here now. She jerked her head toward the warrior's den. Of course. Would nests be waiting for them? Suddenly nervous, Blue Fur followed Snowfur under the low branch at the entrance and padded into the den. She blinked to let her eyes adjust to the gloom. The low roof made the den seem small, though it was broader than the apprentice's den. Nests circled the central trunk and spiraled out to the edge. Sunfall, Stormtail, and Adderfang were curled in moss-lined scoops at the center, while Patchpelt and Thrushpelt slept farther out. Blue Fur guessed that, as the newest warriors, their nests would be near the outer branches. But where? Can you see any spaces? She breathed in Snowfur's ear. Over here. Patchpelt raised his head and hissed across the den. Carefully, Blue Fur picked her way around the sleeping warriors, her heart in her throat in case she stepped on a tail or a paw or rustled bracken and woke someone. You can have leopard foots and white eyes, Patchpelt nodded toward the two empty nests beside his. The bracken was as flat as a thunderpath rabbit, and the moss smelled damp and stale when Blue Fur leaned down to sniff it. But she didn't care. Right now, she was so tired and cold that she'd be happy to sleep anywhere. Sleep well, Snowfur. She relished using her sister's warrior name. They could be friends again now that they had left the apprentice's den, and Thistlepaw behind them. They'd hunt together, patrol the borders to check for scent marks and invaders, and never, ever be closer to another cat. Snowfur touched her nose with her muzzle. You too, Bluefur. Happily, Blue Fur circled down into Leopardfoot's nest, and purring, drifted into sleep. The other warriors were gone by the time Blue Fur woke up. Snow Fur was still sleeping, her breath stirring a tendril of grass that poked up through the bracken. Blue Fur nudged her with a paw. Wake up! Snow Fur sat up, her eyes bleary. What? Bright sunshine filtered through the dark needles above them. It must be nearly sun high, Bluefur observed. Are we supposed to be on patrol? Snowfur wondered. Bluefur shrugged. No one told us. Snowfur started lapping at her chest. I'm going to look my best for my first day as warrior. Me too. Bluefur's tongue ached by the time she'd finished washing. She sat up proudly knowing that her fur was smooth and clean, and her tail fluffed up. A scrap of moss was clinging to Snowfur's shoulder. You missed a bit. Blue Fur leaned forward, nipped it out with her teeth, and spat it away. Perfect. Snowfur's pelt looked as soft and white as a fawn's belly. Blue Fur led the way out of the den. The clearing was bright with sunshine. Blue sky stretched over the camp, and a warm breeze was swishing the bright green leaves in the trees above. About time, too. Sunfall's sharp mew sounded across the clearing. He was frowning beside the nettle patch. Dismayed, Bluefur glanced at Snowfur. Are you sure no one mentioned a patrol? She whispered. Sunfall waited, 
tail flicking as they padded toward him. I don't mind that you miss the Dawn Patrol, he meowed. But the hunting patrol had to leave without you, which means they're short of paws, and there'll be less on the fresh kill pile come sunset. But no one told us, Bluefur cried. Why was he lecturing her like she was still an apprentice? The fur ruffled on her spine. You're warriors now, Sunfall told her. You shouldn't need to be dug out of your nests to serve your clan. Bluefur stared at her paws, too ashamed even to glance at Snowfur. Sorry. There's something else you can do. Bluefur was relieved to hear Sunfall's voice soften. She looked up. What? Feather Whisker wants to gather cat mint from Two Leg Place. Leaf gathering? Bluefur's heart sank. This was going to be as disappointing as her first day as an apprentice. He needs a warrior escort, Sunfall went on. Bluefur pricked her ears. This was more like it. There's been more kitty pets sent than usual around the border, the ThunderClan deputy explained. I don't want him to go alone. So, kitty pets could be dangerous. Bluefur began to understand why Pinestar had been so angry at finding her near the two-leg fence. Jake didn't look like he could win a fight with a mouse, but it could have just been an act to catch her off guard. Featherwhisker trotted from the fern tunnel, his eyes bright. Are these my escorts? He looked blue fur and snow fur up and down before nodding a greeting to Sunfall. Snow fur plucked at the ground. Yes, she meowed. We'll make sure no cat hurts you. The medicine cat apprentice's whiskers twitched. Thank you. Are we going now? Bluefur joined them. Featherwhisker glanced at the sky. The dew should be burned off by now. Is that good? Bluefur wondered. It means the sprigs will be dry when we gather them, so they won't rot in the store. Featherwhisker was already heading for the camp entrance. Once in the forest, Bluefur fell in beside him while Snowfur trotted at his other flank. She scanned the trees, ears pricked for any danger. She was in charge of protecting a clanmate. Is it safe? Featherwhisker asked. Was that a hint of a purr in his mew? No danger here, Snowfur reported. What a relief, meowed the medicine cat apprentice. The forest was filled with fresh scents as they headed for the border. It was hard to resist following the prey trails, but they had a duty to perform. Blue Fur wasn't going to let anything distract her. As they passed the sandy hollow, she spotted flashes of fur moving beyond the undergrowth. Sweet Paw and Rosepaw were practicing their battle moves. She wondered what Featherwhisker had felt when he had been told that he would be spending his time as an apprentice in a medicine den rather than in the sandy hollow. What a shame you're not a warrior, too she commented to Featherwhisker. Featherwhisker blinked. But I wouldn't want to be. Why not? Snowfur was staring at the apprentice medicine cat as if he had announced he was about to grow wings. I prefer to help my clanmates by healing, not fighting. But don't you wish you could hunt sometimes? Bluefur wondered. Who says I don't? Featherwhisker suddenly darted between the snaking roots of a birch and racked his forepaws through a drift of trapped leaves. Plunging in his muzzle, he jerked back with a mouse dangling from his jaws. Snowfur hurried forward. That's amazing! How did you learn to hunt? Bluefur gasped. Featherwhisker dropped the mouse and started digging a shallow hole in the soft earth. I don't spend every moment gathering herbs. He dropped the mouse in the hole and scraped the earth over it. I'll collect it later. Trotting away, he headed once more for the border. As they passed through tall pines, the scent of two-leg place drifted through the trees. And by the time they reached the line of ThunderClan scent markers, the smell of kitty pet had grown strong. Sunfall had been right. Bluefur paused to taste the air wondering if she would recognize Jake's scent among the jumble of others. She wrinkled her nose. 
Kitty pets smelled worse than River Clan, and there were far too many of them to tell which was which. Snowfur and Feather Whisker had padded along the border without her, and she hurried to catch up to them. Where's the catmint? She called. Outside an abandoned two leg nest. Feather Whisker's mew sounded taut. Bluefur tensed. Is it dangerous? Not usually. You sound worried. I'll be happy when I see if the catmint has survived Leaf Bear, Feather Whisker explained. The frosts were unusually hard. What if it's dead? Snowfur asked. Then I'll have to ask Brambleberry for supplies, Feather Whisker told them. There's no other cure for green cough. Bluefur bristled. Even though green cough could be deadly, asking the River Clan medicine cat for anything would be humiliating. What if River Clan used the cat mint to bargain for sunning rocks? A blackbird shrilled overhead. Had they alarmed it? She let Feather Whisker and Snowfur push ahead into a thick swath of ferns and scan the area. Something dark moved beyond the scent markers. Bluefur froze. A kitty pet? She squinted through the undergrowth and stiffened with surprise when she realized it was Pine Star. What was he doing out there on his own? She ducked low and watched curiously as the ThunderClan leader padded to a two-leg fence. He seemed very relaxed. He must be totally confident that he could beat any kitty pet who dared stray into his path. He leaped up onto the fence and balanced there, staring toward the two-leg nest. Was he looking for a fight? Perhaps he was hoping to send a message to the kitty pets around there to keep out of ThunderClan territory. Should she offer to help? No. Bluefur remembered how angry Pine Star had been the last time he'd found her there. She didn't want him to think she made a habit of hanging around Two Leg Place. Besides, she was supposed to be guarding Feather Whisker. Treading lightly so that Pine Star wouldn't hear her, she hurried after her clanmates. There you are, Snowfur greeted her. They were crouched beneath a wall. Rocks lay scattered at the bottom, and a break gaped at the top where the stonework had crumbled. The cat mints over there, Feather Whisker stretched his forepaws up the wall. Snowfur's eyes opened wide. What if kitty pets come? Scare them off, Feather Whisker leaped up. It shouldn't be hard, he called from the top. They think clan cats eat bones and grow to the size of badgers when we're angry. Scrabbling over the top, he disappeared down the other side. Quick! Snowfur sprang after him. By the time Bluefur scrambled up, Feather Whisker was streaking around the edge of the enclosed clearing on the other side. Let's keep watch from up here, Bluefur suggested. Snowfur nodded. I'll stand guard at that corner. She beckoned with her nose to where the wall turned a few tail lengths away. And you watch from there. We'll have every view covered. As Snowfur picked her way along the crumbling stonework, Bluefur padded to her corner and sat down. Her heart flapped in her chest. This was her first warrior mission. She was in charge of getting Feather Whisker home safely with a supply of catmint that might one day save a ThunderClan life. They could be attacked by kitty pets at any moment, or a two leg might appear from anywhere. She looked down anxiously. Feather Whisker was digging through the thickly weeded undergrowth at one side of the grassy clearing. Is the cat mint alive? She called. But the medicine cat apprentice's muzzle was too deeply buried in weeds to hear. Snowfur was staring out into the trees. Her ears pricked up. Bluefur scanned her own side. Through the leaves fluttering on the low branches, she spotted Pine Star. He was still on the fence and beside him she recognized a cat with an orange pelt. Jake? Was Pine Star going to attack him? Bluefur tensed, waiting for the first shriek. But none came. The two cats seemed to be quietly talking. Get away! Snowfur's hiss made Bluefur jump. What's wrong? She scooted along the wall, hackles raised. 
Snowfur was staring down at a tortoiseshell kitty pet who was gazing up at her with enormous golden eyes. Bluefur arched her back. We grow big as badgers when we're angry, she warned. And we eat bones, Snowfur spat. Yowling in terror, the kitty pet whirled around and sped into the undergrowth. Bluefur purred. That was easy. She bounded down into the grassy clearing and ran to tell Featherwhisker. Don't worry, she announced. We frightened off the kitty pet. Featherwhisker plucked his head from the weed tangle. What kitty pet? The one threatening to climb the wall. Threatening, eh? Featherwhisker's eyes glowed. Blue fur fidgeted with embarrassment. Well, it might have jumped up. Featherwhisker purred. Thanks, he mewed. Can you call Snowfur? I need both of you to help me carry this cat mint back. Blue fur dashed back to the wall. Featherwhisker needs help. She led Snowfur back to where Featherwhisker had piled bundles of cat mint on the grass and scooped up a bundle under her chin just as Stonepelt had taught her. The fragrant scent made Bluefur's claws itch. It smelled delicious. I can manage more, she offered. Featherwhisker dragged another frond from the plant and Bluefur grasped it in her jaws. I want to try that, Snowfur sounded impressed. She struggled to grasp two bundles as blue fur had, securing them in place at last, and the three cats set off for home with the precious herb. You've brought loads, Goosefeather was delighted when they dropped the cat mint in the medicine clearing. Blue fur felt a surge of pride. Her mouth was still watering from the tantalizing taste. It had been hard not to munch a leaf or two, but she knew it was too precious to waste. You must be hungry, Goosefeather went on. Go get something to eat. He glanced at Featherwhisker. You may as well go too, and while you're at the fresh kill pile, you can bring me back a morsel to eat. I've had a busy morning. Bluefur glanced around at the clearing. It was scattered with herbs lying amid fallen leaves, and a patch of grass was flattened in one corner, where the sun pooled. It was the exact shape of a plump medicine cat. Busy, huh? Sunfall was nosing through the fresh kill pile when they reached it. He looked up. Pine Star's just arrived, hungry as a starling, he meowed. Bluefur glanced at the Thunder Clan leader who was washing beside the nettle patch. He had made it back to camp before them, but he hadn't been carrying two bundles of cat mint. How did you get on with your first assignment? Sunfall asked. Okay, Bluefur mewed hoping Featherwhisker agreed. Featherwhisker purred. They gave me enough time to gather plenty. Pinestar looked up. You were gathering catmint? Enough to see us through till leaf fall, Featherwhisker replied. Was that alarm flashing in the ThunderClan leader's eyes? Was he worried they'd seen him chatting with Jake? Sunfall pawed a thrush from the pile. I'm glad they were useful. They scared off a kitty pet, Featherwhisker told him. Sunfall dipped his head. Well done, you two. He sounded genuinely pleased. Bluefur puffed out her chest as Sunfall carried the thrush to Pine Star. The ThunderClan leader turned it over with his paw and sniffed it, as though he wasn't sure whether he was hungry anymore. Surely he had worked up an appetite trekking all the way to Two Leg Place and back. Bluefur's belly was growling like a shadow clan warrior. She picked a mouse from the pile and settled beside the tree stump. As she began to chew on the mouse, she looked at Pine Star again. He was nibbling delicately on a wing while Sunfall dozed beside him. Just what had the Thunder Clan leader been doing on that fence? Chapter 17 a full moon lit the clearing, dappling the clans. For the first time in moons, the great oaks of four trees swished with leaves. Bluefur shivered, exhilarated as the fresh night breeze ruffled her fur. This was her first gathering as a warrior, and her first where clan grudges and rivalries seemed to have been forgotten, at least for the truce. 
WindClan looked sleek and well fed. RiverClan stank of freshly caught fish. ShadowClan's eyes flashed brightly from the dark shade of the trees. Mumblefoot was sharing tongues with Whiteberry, a WindClan elder, while the medicine cats huddled together, talking quietly. Adderfang and Stormtail sat with Otter Splash and Ragged Pelt, while Poppy Dawn sat in a circle of apprentices, purring indulgently while they boasted. I climbed my first tree yesterday, a tabby River Clan apprentice meowed, flexing his claws. Poppy Dawn blinked. Do River Clan cats climb trees? I thought you just swam, Sweet Paw mewed. The River Clan tabby fluffed out his chest. I can do both. Well, I bet you can't catch squirrels, Thistlepaw challenged. Yuck, the River Clan apprentice pulled a face. Who would want to? River Clan was acting as though their attack on Sunning Rocks had not happened, and the Thunder Clan warriors weren't crowing about their victory. Yet, as Crooked Paw headed toward her, Blue Fur felt a prickle of unease. You fought well he mewed. She flattened her ears. I fight even better now that I'm a warrior, she warned. His eyes lit unexpectedly with excitement. I've got my warrior name too. Crooked jaw? How did you guess? A purr rumbled in his throat. Because your tail's still straight. A yowl sounded from the great rock. Let the gathering begin. Pine Star stood at the edge of the stone, moonlight gleaming on his pelt. Silhouetted behind him were Hail Star, Heather Star, and Cedar Star. Pine Star stepped back as the clans began to crowd beneath the rock, and Cedar Star took his place. New Leaf has brought prey and warmth, but also more kitty pets, the Shadow Clan leader announced. Only today, a hunting patrol had to chase a ginger tom from our borders. Jake? Bluefur watched Pine Star checking for a reaction. Otter Splash called from River Clan. They hide in their cozy nests all leaf bare and forget that the woods are ours. Adderfang curled his lip. It never takes long to remind them to keep to their own soft lives. The clans murmured in agreement. Hailstar padded to the front. Wind Clan has increased patrols to remind the barn cats to stay off our land. He looked expectantly at Pine Star. Blue Fur narrowed her eyes. Would Pine Star tell the clans about kitty pets intruding on Thunder Clan territory? The Thunder Clan leader lifted his chin. We intend to increase patrols, he paused, suddenly glaring at Hail Star, to warn off any intruders. Blue Fur shifted her paws. Why bring up clan rivalries now? Everyone seemed to agree that it was kitty pets causing the trouble. She wasn't the only cat ruffled by Pine Star's challenge. Growls rumbled among the River Clan cats. No Shadow Clan cat has crossed your border in moons, Ragged Pelt the deputy snarled. Hawkheart called from the knot of medicine cats. Wind Clan has stayed to our side of four trees. Hailstar's hackles lifted. Are you accusing River Clan of crossing your scent line? Pine Star shrugged. I'm not accusing any cat of anything, but Thunder Clan will be stepping up patrols from now on. He blinked at Cedar Star. Better safe than sorry. Blue Fur's belly tightened as anger charged the air. Crooked Jaw stood up. Why accuse the clans? We were talking about kitty pets. Oakheart growled from beside his brother. Thunderclan cats always were a bunch of kitty pet friends. Who are you calling kitty pet friends? Adderfang whipped his head around, eyes blazing. Oakheart met his gaze steadily. Confidence glowed in the Riverclan warrior's eyes. You live beside Two Leg Place, he growled. You're practically den mates. Poppy Dawn bristled. How dare you, fish breath? Heather Star called from the Great Rock. By Star Clan, stop. She looked up at Silver Pelt, glittering through the leaves. Wisps of clouds were hiding some of the stars. 
Muttering, the clans fell into a prickly silence. The Wind Clan leader lifted her muzzle. Kitty pets rarely reach our borders. Talltail called from below. They're too slow to chase rabbits anyway. And squirrels, Smalley added. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the clans, but pelts were still ruffled. Bluefur's paws pricked with frustration. Why had Pinestar stirred up trouble? Hailstar stepped to the front of the Great Rock again. Enough of kitty pets, he yelled. River Clan has a new warrior, he nodded to his clan. Crooked Jaw. As the clans muttered half hearted cheers for the new warrior, Blue Fur tensed. Was she going to get the same reception as Leopardfoot and Patchpelt had? She closed her eyes as Pine Star announced her name along with Snowfurs, relieved when the clans grunted their approval even if it was less of a welcome than they had given Crooked Jaw. As the gathering broke up in a frosty silence, Snowfur brushed against her. Why did Pine Star try to upset the other clans? Bluefur whispered. He was only warning them off. But why accuse them instead of the kitty pets? Snowfur shrugged. The kitty pets aren't here. That wasn't good enough. There'd been no evidence of other clans crossing the border, but the kitty pets had been coming and going as though they owned the territory. Why didn't Pine Star want to admit that kitty pets were stinking up the border with their scent markers and scaring away prey that was needed to fatten the clan after a long leaf bear? The morning brought warmth to the camp. Bluefur yawned, tired after her late night. Snowfur had already left on the dawn patrol with Adderfang and Thistlepaw. The new leaf sun shone on the clearing as Bluefur gathered below High Rock to hear Sunfall name the patrols. She flicked her tail happily when he called her name to hunt with Thrushpelt, Tawny Spots, and Rosepaw. Bluefur? Leopardfoot was padding from Pine Star's den, the lichen still swishing behind her. Pine Star wants to speak with you. Why? Had she done something wrong? Perhaps he'd seen her watching him with Jake. Or maybe some cat had overheard her ask Snowfur why Pine Star had challenged the clans and not the kitty pets. Leopardfoot shrugged and headed for the nursery, her paw steps heavy beneath the weight of her belly. Bluefur padded reluctantly to Pine Star's den. The clan leader was blinking in the gloom as she nosed her way in. Bluefur, he greeted her solemnly. Bluefur stared nervously at him, shifting her paws. I've overlooked part of your training, he meowed. What? You haven't seen the Moonstone. The Moonstone? The sacred stone where leaders received their nine lives, and where the medicine cats shared dreams with Star Clan. Excitement pushed all worries from Bluefur's mind. All young cats should go there to receive Star Clan's blessing, Pine Star went on. I would have taken you before, but the battle with Wind Clan and the heavy snows have made the journey too hard. Now I want to share dreams with Star Clan, and you might as well come with me. Will Snowfur come too? Wind Clan may not trust three warriors crossing their land, Pine Star meowed. I'll take her next time. Bluefur knew that they had to cross the moorland to reach Mothermouth, the cave that held the Moonstone. Surely WindClan would know they were just passing through their territory. She sighed. Perhaps memories of the attack on the WindClan camp were still too raw. The ThunderClan leader closed his eyes. Go to Goosefeather for traveling herbs, he murmured. Traveling herbs? Bluefur wondered if they'd taste as bad as the herbs that Goosefeather had given the cats before the attack on Wind Clan. Should I bring you some? Pine Star shook his head. I must not eat before sharing with Star Clan. Lucky you. She turned and pushed through the lichen. Goosefeather was already waiting outside the fern tunnel. Bluefur tensed. He hadn't said anything about the prophecy since the day the fox came. Two moons ago. Would he mention it now? But he just blinked and pushed the herbs toward her. 
Pine Star says he's taking you to the Moonstone. Blue Fur nodded. Was that curiosity flashing in his eyes? Eat these. He turned and padded away. Had he mentioned something to Pine Star about the prophecy? Is that why the ThunderClan leader was taking her and not Snowfur? Did he know she was special? Hurry up, Pine Star called across the clearing. I want to be there by moon high. Bluefur quickly lapped up the pile of green leaves, gagging against the bitterness, and raced after her leader. They followed the route to four trees, retracing their steps to last night's gathering. Bluefur could smell lingering clan scents as they padded past the great rock. It looked strange in daylight, dull and lifeless without the moon's glow. The grass became coarse beneath her paws as they climbed the slope to Wind Clan territory. Remember, Pine Star warned as the wind began to whip at their fur and the trees gave way to stunted bushes. No hunting here. Of course not. Besides, Blue Fur wasn't hungry. Goosefeather's herbs had squashed her appetite and made her paws itch to run. But she followed Pine Star's steady pace as he led the way through the heather until the ground flattened out into a wide plateau. Blue Fur scanned the horizon looking for Wind Clan's camp and the rock where she had sheltered during the battle. But only the sound of the wind streaming over the grass seemed familiar. Suddenly the ground dipped down at their paws and the whole length of Wind Clan's territory stretched out on either side. Pine Star stopped as the world unfurled in front of them. The moorland reached down into a wide, deep valley where two leg nests clustered in knots, small as grass seeds, and far in the distance rose a cliff of tall, jagged peaks. Are those high stones? Bluefur breathed. Pine Star nodded. The acid tang of the thunder path drifted from the valley. Bluefur could see a thin gray strip winding like a river below them. She had seen the thunder path that separated ThunderClan's forest from ShadowClan territory, but had never crossed it. This thunder path looked busier. From there, it seemed as though the monsters crawled along like insects. But Bluefern knew how huge they were, and had heard of cats killed by them, traveling at such speed that even the fastest warrior could be caught. Come on, Pine Star started down the slope. Bluefur could smell the scent markers lining the Wind Clan border, and see the lush grass coating the slopes below. Her paws ached for its softness. Halt! A wind clan yowl made them freeze. Blue fur stiffened as Pine Star whipped around to greet the wind clan patrol. Bracing herself, she turned to see Talltail and Reedfeather, the wind clan deputy bounding through the heather. Their hackles raised and teeth bared, three more warriors at their heels. Let your fur lie flat, Pine Star hissed. Blue fur tried to calm herself, taking deep breaths. We're allowed to cross to High Stones, she told herself, as the Wind Clan warriors pulled up a tail length away. Reed Feather narrowed his eyes. Are you going to High Stones? He challenged. Pine Star nodded. The Wind Clan deputy circled them, opening his mouth to taste their scent. We haven't hunted, Pine Star meowed evenly. Reed Feather snorted. With ThunderClan, it's always best to make sure. Pine Star dug his claws into the peaty soil but said nothing. Go then, Reedfeather snapped, and hurry. We don't want you stinking up our land and scaring off prey. Pine Star turned. Wasn't he going to respond? Blue Fur struggled to keep her fur from bristling with anger. But Pine Star just padded heavily down the slope, head and tail down. There was no fear scent on him. But the weariness in his step made Bluefur wonder what was driving him to share dreams with Star Clan. Perhaps he was more worried about the kitty pets than he would admit. Bluefur could feel the stares of the Wind Clan patrol burning her pelt as she headed downhill. She relaxed only when they crossed the border, her paws sinking into the soft grass. From there, Pine Star kept to quiet pathways winding far from two-leg nests. 
Lufer ached with tiredness by the time they neared the thunder path, and she was glad of the traveling herbs that kept her hunger at bay. The sun was dropping behind high stones, throwing long shadows across the valley. Overhead, the moon hung in a pale sky, and stars began to blink. The roar of the thunder path shook Bluefur's belly. By the time they reached it, an endless stream of monsters was roaring past, eyes blazing. Dazzled, Bluefur blinked each time one roared past and wrinkled her nose at its stinking breath. Pinestar crouched in the ditch at the edge, steadying her with a touch of his tail. Bluefur couldn't stop trembling. The monsters pounded past from both directions, their foul hot wind tugging her whiskers and buffeting her fur. How would they get across? Stay behind me, Pinestar ordered. He guided her forward till her claws touched the stinking black stone, hardly flinching as another monster roared past, less than a tail length away. Terrified, Blue Fur leaped backward. Get back here, Pinestar growled. Breathing hard, Bluefur crept back to his side and forced herself to hold her ground as another monster whizzed past. Now, Pinestar shot forward. Heart pounding in her throat, Bluefur raced with him, her paws slipping on the smooth thunder path, her mind whirling in panic as she saw lights bearing down and heard the yowl of a monster hurtling toward them. Blind with terror, she ran with Pinestar, pressing against his pelt until the ground turned to grass beneath her paws. We're safe now, Pinestar panted. Blue Fur opened her eyes, relieved to find herself on the far edge of the thunder path. Still trembling, she followed the Thunder Clan leader as he headed to High Stones. The wind, chilly with night air, whipped through her fur. She shivered and glanced up. The sun was no more than a glow over the jagged peaks, and the sky was black overhead. Trembling, she searched out the brightest star. Could that be Moonflower watching her first journey to the Moonstone? The land sloped and steepened, and the grass turned to stones beneath their paws. Pine Star was breathing heavily, and Blue Fur's belly was beginning to growl. There would be little to hunt on this bare, rocky soil, dotted only with heather made ragged by the wind. She was relieved when Pine Star paused. He lifted his tawny muzzle and stared up the slope. Mother mouth. Holding her breath, Blue Fur followed his gaze. Above them, as the slope grew steeper and rockier, a hole gaped in the hillside. Square and black, it yawned beneath a stone archway. Pine Star glanced at the moon glowing high overhead. It's time. Chapter 18 Welcome to Mother Mouth. Pine Star brushed his tail lightly over Blue Fur's shoulder before entering the tunnel. Almost at once, his red brown coat vanished into the shadows. With one last glance at the star filled sky, Blue Fur followed. Darkness swallowed her, pressing so thick that she held her breath and waited for the blackness to swamp her like water. Pine Star's paw steps brushed the floor as it began to slope deep into the earth, and she padded after him with the blood roaring in her ears. Pine Star? She gasped. Freezing air rushed into her lungs. The taste of water and stone and earth bathed her tongue. Where was he? His scent was lost in the jumble of strange odors. Crushed by the darkness, panic surged through her pelt. She darted forward, squawking as she crashed into him and bowled him over. What in the name of Star Clan are you doing? Pine Star scrambled to his paws, untangling himself from Blue Fur. Hot with embarrassment, she jumped up, wishing she could see something. I got scared. She felt his pelt press against hers. We're nearly there, he promised. I'll walk beside you till it gets lighter. Gets lighter? Bluefur peered ahead in disbelief. How could it be light down there? And yet, after a few more paw steps, her eyes detected a glow in the tunnel ahead. As Pine Star pulled away, Bluefur began to make out the tall, smooth sides of the tunnel, glistening with moisture. 
and then the tunnel opened into a cavern, arching high above Pine Star, making the Thunder Clan leader look very small. Vast curved walls reached to a high ceiling, and there, at the top, a hole was open to the sky. The scents of heather and wind washed down, and moonlight flooded in and bathed the great stone standing in the center of the cave. The stone reached several tail lengths high, sparkling like countless dewdrops and illuminating the cave like a captured star. Bluefur's paws would not move. She stood and stared, horribly aware of the choking blackness that stood between her and freedom, longing to feel the wind in her fur and frightened by the thought that Star Clan shared dreams in this place. Were her ancestors with them now? Weaving invisibly around her? She pressed herself against a wall, instinctively backing away from the moonstone. Make yourself comfortable, Pine Star told her. I must share dreams with Star Clan now. Blue Fur crouched down, fluffing out her fur to protect her belly from the freezing stone floor. She wondered if sunshine ever filled this cavern the way moonshine did now and she yearned for warmth and brightness to sweep away the cold, eerie glow. Pine Star approached the moonstone and, crouching beside it, touched the sparkling crystal with his nose. Instantly, his eyes closed and his body stiffened. Blue fur tensed, waiting for sparks or flashes. But nothing moved or changed. The cave was silent but for the wind sighing down the moonstone. The journey had been long, and she felt tiredness creep through her. Her eyes glazed and grew heavy, and she let them close so that darkness engulfed her. Dreaming now, she gulped for air and breathed water. Panic surged beneath her pelt as a fierce current swept her off her paws and tumbled her into endless darkness. Water dragged at her fur, filled her nose and eyes and ears, blinding her, deafening her to all but the terror screaming in her mind. Struggling against the torrent, coughing and fighting, Bluefur thrashed her paws, her lungs aching for air. She searched for light to swim toward, some sense of where the breathing world might be, but saw nothing beyond the endless black water. She woke, gasping, her pelt bristling with fear. Pine Star stood outlined against the shimmering crystal. He stared at her through narrowed eyes. Nightmare? Panting, she nodded and got clumsily to her paws, still drowsy with sleep and swamped by terror. Fresh air will clear your head. Pine Star led the way from the cavern. Blue Fur followed, too shocked by her dream to speak. The memory of drowning seared in her thoughts. She let her whiskers touch Pine Star's tail and followed his paw steps up the black, ice-smooth tunnel until at last moonlight washed her paws and she felt the wind brush her fur. We'll rest here till dawn. Pine Star was already curling into the smooth shelter of a boulder just beyond the mouth of the tunnel. It was chilly under paw, but Blue Fur was glad to be out in the open. Silver pelts sparkled above them. Moonflower. The milk scent of her mother seemed to enfold her, comforting her. She stopped shivering, but her mind still swirled. Had she just tasted the truth of the prophecy? Was she really going to drown? To be destroyed by water as Goosefeather had told her? The rising sun woke her. It felt as if she had hardly slept at all, but her dream had faded, and she could no longer taste water in her mouth. Bluefur blinked open her eyes and gazed at the milky horizon, watching the pink sun lap the distant moorland. As she stood and stretched, Pine Star woke beside her and yawned. He stared wearily across the valley. I suppose we'd better go back. Bluefur couldn't wait to be home, back in the ravine among her clanmates. She paced the rock sniffing hopefully for prey while Pine Star stretched and washed and finally set off down the slope. They skirted the two-leg nests, and when they reached Wind Clan territory, they skirted the edge of that, too. Blue fur felt like a thief, skulking in the shadows beyond the scent markers. Pine Star hardly spoke. 
Bluefur decided that if she were leader, she would not be bullied by Wind Clan patrols. The warrior code gave them permission to pass over the moors. No cat had the right to stop a leader from sharing with Star Clan. Then she remembered the hostility in Reedfeather's eyes. Did she really want to face that after such a long journey? Her paws felt too heavy to fight, and her mind too sleepy to argue. Will they hate us forever? She wondered out loud. Pine Star glanced at her. Wind Clan? He sighed, his breath whipped away by the breeze. They'll forgive us for the attack, then hate us for some other reason, just as the other clans will. The four clans will be enemies until the end. He trudged onward, tail down. Though he spoke, he hardly seemed to be talking to Blue Fur at all. And yet we all want the same things. Pray to hunt, a safe territory to raise our kits and peace to share dreams with our ancestors. Why must we hate one another over such simple desires? Blue Fur stared at the tawny haunches of her clan leader. Was this really how he saw clan life? There was more to it than hatred and rivalry. The warrior code told them to protect their clanmates and fight for what was theirs. Did that mean nothing more than hating every cat beyond their borders? She gazed across the bristling moorland, searching for the dip where the wind clan camp nestled and where her mother had been slaughtered. Maybe that was all it meant. She would hate Wind Clan forever. She would hate any clan that harmed those she loved, and from what she had seen, the other clans meant nothing but harm. They reached the ravine at last and stumbled down on tired paws. Afternoon sun spilled into the camp, lighting the clearing so that Blue Fur could see it flashing through the treetops. The familiar sense of home warmed her paws. Go rest in your den. Pine Star ordered as they padded through the gorse tunnel. His tone was brisk. He sounded once more like ThunderClan's leader, and the weariness she had heard on the moors seemed to have lifted. Relieved to be back where things felt normal, Blue Fur felt her belly rumble. They hadn't stopped to hunt, and she was starving. But exhaustion reached down into her bones. Sleep first, then food. She scuffed the ground as she stumbled toward the warrior's den and pushed her way in. Someone had added bracken to her nest and lined it with fresh moss. Gratefully, she sank down into it and closed her eyes. You're back! A mouse thudded in front of her nose. Snowfur was circling her nest. What was it like? Was it big? Did Pine Star dream? Did you dream? What happened? Blue Fur lifted her head and blinked at her sister. It was big and shiny, and Pine Star dreamed. What about? He didn't say. Is it really far? Did you see any two legs? How big are high stones? Sparrow Pelt says they're the biggest things in the world. They're higher than the moorland, and we avoided the two legs, and we walked all day. Blue Fur sniffed the mouse. Her mouth watered at the smell, but she was too tired to chew. Thanks for cleaning my nest, she murmured, eyes half closed. That wasn't me, Snowfur sounded surprised. That was Thrushpelt. He said you'd be tired when you got back. Blue Fur closed her eyes, too tired to comment, and felt Snowfur's warm muzzle press her head. Sleep well, sister. Blue Fur heard Bracken crunch as Snow Fur left her to sleep and drifted away into a swirl of stars and voices that whispered just beyond her hearing. And all around her, rushing black water tugged at her pelt and chilled her to the bone. Chapter 19 Blue Fur followed Adderfang, Thistlepaw, and Thrushpelt through the trees as they headed back to the camp after an early border patrol. Soft greenleaf sunshine dappled her pelt, and a bee buzzed close to her ear as it looped its way through a clump of ferns. It would be a perfect day to be lying on sunning rocks, Thistlepaw mewed wistfully. Adderfang snorted. 
I can't believe Pine Star hasn't done anything to take them back from those River Clan fish faces. He should have launched an attack the moment they moved the border markers. Thistlepaw batted the air in a mock lunge. Instead, we have to watch those fish faces loll about on our territory. We don't need the prey from Sunning Rocks, Thrushpelt pointed out. There's enough in the rest of the forest. That's not the point, Adderfang snapped. He's made us look weak. Shadow Clan will be helping themselves to Snake Rocks next. Blue Fur flicked her tail. Shadow Clan can have Snake Rocks. It attracts more adders and foxes than it does prey. A low growl rumbled in Adderfang's throat. Shedding blood over Sunning Rocks is pointless, Thrushpelt argued. From what the elders say, it's happened enough times in the clan's history already. It's easier just to let them have it. We have enough prey. In Greenleaf, Thistlepaw snapped. But what about during Leaf Bear, when we need every whisker of territory? You're just repeating what Adderfang's told you. Blue Fur narrowed her eyes. The mouse-brained apprentice never thought that far ahead on his own. If it becomes worth fighting over, then I'm sure Pine Star will fight. Thistlepaw curled his lip. Has our leader been confiding in you? He sneered. He doesn't need to. Blue Fur growled as they reached the top of the ravine. It just makes sense. She shouldered past Thistlepaw and bounded down the rocks. Leopardfoot was basking outside the nursery. Her belly was so swollen with kits, she looked as round as a badger. Warm enough? Blue Fur asked as she passed. Leopardfoot lifted her head. It can't be too warm for me, she purred. Blue Fur headed for the fresh kill pile. There's plenty of prey to choose from. Lionpaw was lying beside the tree stump with Goldenpaw. I caught a thrush and a vole myself. Goldenpaw flicked her tail across his ears. Stop showing off. Lionpaw lapped at the thick fur around his neck. I was just being honest. Bluefur's whiskers twitched. Following the warrior code, I suppose, she teased. She stepped out of the way as Sunfall came hurrying toward the apprentice's den. Hey, Lionpaw, have you seen Pine Star? Lionpaw looked up. I thought he went out with a hunting patrol. Sunfall narrowed his eyes. I thought so too, but the hunting patrols just come back and Pine Star's not with them. Blue Fur tipped her head on one side. Had the rest of the border patrol noticed her sniffing for Pine Star's scent as they'd passed the two leg place border? She couldn't forget seeing him with Jake. And since their trip to the Moonstone a moon ago, the feeling that something was wrong with the ThunderClan leader had never entirely gone away. Was he in two-leg place right now, talking to Jake, making himself comfortable among the kitty pets as a way to escape his worries about the clans? Lionpaw gave up on his tufty fur and padded over to the bright orange warrior. Would you like me to look for him? He offered. Sunfall shook his head. I want you to come with me on a patrol to check the border along the river, he explained. River Clan may have taken sunning rocks from us, but they're not allowed to set one paw on this side of them. The Dawn Patrol picked up some scents as far in as the trees, so I think we should patrol there more often in case those fish faces have any ideas about invading us. Bluefur, you can come too. Bluefur glanced at the teetering pile of prey. Have I got time for a mouse? Make it quick. Sunfall turned. I'll round up Sparrow Pelt and White Eye. Blue Fur gulped down a mouse, burping as Lionpaw jumped to his paws. Are you coming? He asked Goldenpaw. Goldenpaw shook her head. Dappletail's teaching me some battle moves for my next assessment. Lionpaw glanced at Blue Fur. I guess it's up to us to scare off those mangy river clan cats. His fur bristled along his back. Why can't they stick to their own territory? They don't even like squirrels. Blue Fur flattened her ears, surprised by his fierceness. He'd been little more than a kit last time they'd fought River Clan. Now he was ready to claw their ears off. She suspected he was secretly hoping they had crossed the border. 
which would give ThunderClan a reason to attack. Thistlepaw wasn't the only cat in ThunderClan who felt uncomfortable losing Sunning Rocks without a fight. But still, she believed Pinestar had been right. A battle's not fun, she warned Lionpaw. At least you've had the chance to find out, he complained. I only ever get to meet the other clans at gatherings. Did he really prefer fighting to talking? Bluefur narrowed her eyes, then remembered Crooked Jaw. At least in battle, you knew where you stood and whom you could trust. She cuffed Lionpaw softly over the ear. Come on. He stopped arching his back and bristling as though he were already fighting, and followed Bluefur as she joined Sunfall, White Eye, and Swift Breeze at the entrance. As soon as they reached the New River Clan border, Bluefur guessed the Dawn Patrol had been mistaken. Though the markers were fresh, the only River Clan scents on this side were so weak they could have drifted across on the breeze. And yet the sight of River Clan warriors lounging on the warm rocks beyond made Bluefur bristle. She may have defended Pinestar's decision to let them take the rocks, but to see them using what had been ThunderClan territory made her claws itch. Sunfall growled beside her, and Swift Breeze plucked at the ground. Pinestar's going to have to take them back eventually, she spat. They insult us every time they set paw on those rocks. Cowards! Lionpaw yowled across the border. Swift Breeze quickly tugged him back by his tail. A smart warrior only starts battles he might win, she hissed. The River Clan warriors were staring through the trees. Blue Fur recognized Crooked Jaw. Was he a friend or an enemy now? Was she supposed to think of him as she did at gatherings or in battle? A tawny pelt slid off the rocks onto the shadowy strip of grass below and padded toward the border. Oh, cart. Trust Crooked Jaw's arrogant littermate to push his luck. He padded slowly along the scent markers, glancing through the trees at the ThunderClan patrol. Bluefur stepped forward and hissed. Oak Heart's eyes gleamed brighter when he saw her, and she found herself drawn into his gaze. River Clan furball, she spat. Were his whiskers twitching? She arched her back. How dare he mock her? Blue fur. Sunfall's sharp mew sounded behind her, but she couldn't break her gaze. Then Oakheart turned and padded slowly up the rocks. Blue fur shivered and jerked away. Don't let them get to you, Swift Breeze advised. Blue fur shook her whiskers, wanting to be rid of Oakheart's gaze. He was as big headed as Thistlepaw. She snorted angrily as she followed her clanmates away through the trees. Pinestar was back when they reached the camp, sitting beside the nettle patch with Patch Pelt. Sunfall? He nodded in greeting to his deputy as they reached the clearing. Is all quiet on the borders? Yes, Sunfall replied. Did the prey run well for you? Pinestar nodded. Star Clan was good to me. He just stopped to hunt on his way home from patrol. Bluefur felt a flicker of relief as she gazed past the ThunderClan leader and saw a plump starling lying on the fresh kill pile. Pinestar had made a good catch. And more importantly, he hadn't been in two-leg place with Jake. Rosepaw bounced past on Sweetpaw's heels. It just sat under the sycamore as if it wanted to be caught, she mewed happily. One pounce and I'd caught it. A nice juicy starling. I bet Leopardfoot will enjoy it. So the clan leader hadn't caught the starling after all. As blue fur stiffened, the nursery brambles twitched. Featherwhisker slid out, his eyes bright with worry. Leopardfoot's kits are coming. So early? Swift Breeze whipped her head around. They're not due for half a moon. Her eyes shimmered with worry for her daughter. Patchpelt got to his paws and hurried from the nettle patch. Is she okay? Featherwhisker didn't answer. Instead, he called to the kit's father. Pinestar, will you stay with her while I get supplies? Pinestar backed away, looking startled. Has he forgotten Leopardfoot is having his kits? 
I think it's best if I leave it to you and Goosefeather. The ThunderClan leader sounded awkward. Was he just being squeamish? Swiftbreeze snorted and squeezed into the nursery. I'll watch her. Larksong padded out of the fallen tree with stone pelt beside her. New kits, she rasped, eyes shining. Featherwhisker hurried toward the medicine den and nearly ran into Goosefeather, who was wandering out of the fern tunnel. Watch where you're going, Featherwhisker snapped. Then he froze. Sorry. But Goosefeather just shambled past his apprentice and stopped at the fresh kill pile. Leopardfoot's kidding. Featherwhisker called after him. I know, I know, Goosefeather muttered distractedly as he began pawing through the pile. Turning each piece of prey with his paw, he leaned down and inspected them closely. Featherwhisker flicked his tail and raced down the fern tunnel. Snowfur slid out of the warrior's den. Did I hear that Leopardfoot's kits are coming? She followed Bluefur's gaze and watched Goosefeather sift through the prey pile. How can he think about food now? Patchpelt frowned. I think he's looking for omens. Omens can wait. Snowfur's ears twitched as a low moan drifted from the nursery. It sounds as though Leopardfoot needs help. Bluefur glanced hopefully at Pinestar. Perhaps he would nudge the medicine cat into action. But Pinestar just stared blankly at Goosefeather, while Goosefeather muttered and tossed aside another piece of prey. Bluefur was relieved to see Featherwhisker racing back from the medicine den with a leaf wrap tight in his jaws. He scrambled back inside the nursery. Thanks, StarClan, he hasn't turned mouse-brained. It's been so long since there have been kits, Larksong sighed. Stonepelt picked up a sparrow, which Goosefeather had tossed aside, and carried it into the shade below High Rock. We might as well eat, he told Larksong. These things take time. Blue fur paced until her paws ached. As the clan cats began to return from patrols and hunting parties, they gathered in the clearing, eyes flicking more anxiously toward the nursery as time passed, with no word from Featherwhisker. Shouldn't you be with her? Larksong called pointedly to Pinestar, who was crouched by the nettle patch. What could I do? Pinestar answered. I'm no medicine cat. Larksong muttered something into Stonepelt's ear and turned her gaze back to the nursery. Stormtail rebuilt the fresh kill pile from the prey that Goosefeather had left all over the ground after wandering off. The gray warrior picked up two shrews and carried them to where White Eye and Tawny Spot sat at the edge of the clearing. There'll be more warriors for ThunderClan by nightfall, he meowed. White Eye flinched as an agonized wail sounded from the nursery. May StarClan light their path, she murmured. The sun began to sink low over the trees when Dappletail and Goldenpaw padded into the camp. How was training? Bluefur called to her old denmate. Dabbletail says I should be fine for my assessment. Goldenpaw trotted over and nodded toward the nursery. What's going on? Leopardfoot's kidding, Bluefur told her. Dappletail's tail flicked. Already? Her eyes clouded with worry. How long has she been at it? Most of the afternoon. Is Goosefeather with her? No. Featherwhisker is. Where's Goosefeather? Dappletail demanded. Stormtail looked up from his shrew. He was at the top of the ravine when we came down. Dappletail blinked. What in the name of Star Clan was he doing up there? Staring at the sky when we passed, muttering about clouds, Stormtail meowed. I don't think he noticed us. The nursery brambles shivered as Featherwhisker squeezed out. His eyes glittered with tension and his pelt was sticking up along his flanks. Blue fur hurried to meet him. Is she okay? Featherwhisker didn't answer. I need moss soaked with water and herbs, he mewed. Go and ask Goosefeather to give you raspberry leaves. Blue fur's belly tightened. The medicine cat apprentice looked strained and she was frightened. 
He might panic if he knew that Goosefeather had wandered off. He's not in his den, she mewed hesitantly. Okay, Featherwhisker stared at her, his mind clearly racing. They look like this. He quickly traced out a leaf shape in the dust with his claw. You'll have to gather them, I can't leave her. Pelts were bristling around the clearing as the clan realized that all was not going well. Blue first stared in panic at the shape he'd scratched. It looked like any other leaf. It's soft to touch, but the edges are jagged, Feather Whisker told her. And they're stacked near the back of the den. He paused. Near the catmint. You remember the catmint? Blue Fur nodded. I'll find it, she promised. Snow Fur brushed up beside her. And I'll get the moss. Together they charged to the medicine den. While Snow Fur picked bundles of moss from the pool at the clearing's edge, Blue Fur slipped into the crack in the rock. The pungent odors of herbs brought back the memory of sneaking in there as a kit with her sister. She wondered how they ever could have been so foolish. And a jab of grief pierced her as she remembered Moonflower dragging them out, her eyes round with fear for her daughters. I can't think about that now. She had to find the catmint. Sniffing, she crept along the row of herbs stacked against the wall. It was so dark she could hardly see them, but their flavors were strong on the air. Just as Feather Whisker had said, the catmint was near the back. She recognized the mouth-watering scent at once. Reaching out with her paw, she began to feel the herbs stacked around it. Her pad brushed a soft leaf. She picked it up between her teeth and felt the edges with her tongue. Jagged. This must be it. Snatching a mouthful, she dashed out of the shadowy den into the soft light of dusk and hurried back to the nursery. Snowfur was already at the entrance. He took the moss inside, she mewed. Blue Fur nosed her way through the prickly entrance and dropped the leaves at Featherwhisker's paws. Are these the right ones? He nodded. Well done. Blue Fur saw Leopardfoot in her nest. Her heart sank. Leopardfoot looked tiny against the moss and bracken, her eyes wild with pain, her pelt matted and smelling of fear. Swift Breeze lifted Leopardfoot's chin with a paw. Try drinking a little. She pushed the dripping moss ball closer and Leopardfoot licked at it, then coughed as her body heaved suddenly. Swift Breeze pricked her ears. Are they coming? Nearly, Feather Whisker soothed. He chewed the leaves into a pulp and dropped them in front of Leopardfoot's muzzle. Eat this. His mew was soft but firm, and Leopardfoot lapped obediently at the pulp, struggling to swallow as her body heaved again. Blue Fur reached forward and pressed her muzzle to Leopardfoot's head. You can do it, she whispered. You always were the strongest. And just think of the beautiful kits you'll have. They'll all be great warriors. Leopardfoot blinked at her dully, and Blue Fur wondered if she'd even heard. She backed toward the entrance. Thank you, Feather Whisker murmured. Nodding, Blue Fur slipped from the den. Outside, the entire clan was uneasy. Stormtail, Sunfall, Adderfang, and Tawny Spots paced the clearing, their pelts pricking as though frustrated that they could not fight this battle with Leopardfoot. Larksong and Stonepelt had been joined by Mumblefoot and Weed Whisker, and they huddled beneath High Rock, eyes glowing in the shadows. Wide Eye pressed against Sparrow Pelt while Robin Wing and Thrush Pelt circled them, glancing every now and then at the darkening sky. Goosefeather appeared from the gorse tunnel and padded straight to his den. He didn't even stop to ask how Leopardfoot was. Bluefur pressed back the urge to rake his muzzle with her claws. He's supposed to be the clan medicine cat for Star Clan's sake. At least Pine Star had got to his paws and was padding among his clanmates. We must eat, he ordered. Starving ourselves won't make these kits come any quicker. Bluefur scowled at him. These kits, they were his kits. Didn't he care? Sunfall nodded and took a pigeon from the fresh kill pile. Lionpaw picked up a squirrel and carried it awkwardly to the tree stump. Thistlepaw was already eating with Snowfur beside the nettle patch. Sweetpaw looked up and caught Bluefur's eye. Join us, 
she called. She was sharing a mouse with Rosepaw. Bluefur padded gratefully toward the two apprentices. She wasn't hungry, but needed the comfort of sharing food with clanmates. As she took a bite of mouse, she glanced at the nursery. Come and join us, she begged her unborn clanmates. While the clan shared tongues after the meal, silver pelt began to glitter overhead. Sunfall yawned and got to his paws. There will be duties tomorrow, whatever happens tonight. He glanced at the nursery and padded away to his den. Nodding and sighing, the rest of the clan cats began to melt away to their nests. Thrush pelt padded past blue fur. You have to sleep too, he meowed. I will, soon, Blue Fur promised, knowing it would be impossible. How could she sleep knowing Leopardfoot was suffering? As Thrushpelt padded away, a tiny wail sounded from the nursery. Blue Fur jumped to her paws. A kit? Goosefeather came hurrying from the medicine den and disappeared into the nursery. He reappeared a moment later. The first kit has been born, he called. A she-cat. Heads poked from dens and murmurs of joy and relief rippled around the camp. Blue Fur rushed past Goosefeather and pushed her way into the nursery. Is Leopardfoot okay? She demanded. Swift Breeze was lapping Leopardfoot's ears. She looked up, her eyes glowing with hope. Featherwhisker was busy crouched over the young queen, and Blue Fur held her breath as another kit plopped out onto the moss. Featherwhisker lapped it, and grasping it by its scruff, dropped it beside its littermate at Leopardfoot's belly. One more to go, he mewed. Leopardfoot shuddered as the last kit fell into the nest. A tom, Featherwhisker mewed happily. He lapped it and placed it beside the other two. Swift breeze purred as Leopardfoot strained to lap at her three kits. Relief and joy flooded Blue Fur, and she backed out of the nursery. The clan had gathered around Pine Star in the clearing. Congratulations, Adderfang meowed. Another battle fought and won, Sunfall purred. Goosefeather shouldered past Blue Fur and disappeared back into the nursery. Dappletail raced up to Blue Fur. Have you seen them? She nodded. Two she cats and a tom. Did you hear that? Dappletail turned at once to Wide Eye. Two she cats and a tom. The news whispered like wind through the clan, and purrs rose from the clearing. Goosefeather struggled from the nursery once again and padded across the clearing. Don't celebrate too soon. Those kits may not make it through the night. Shoulders hunched, he disappeared into the shadows of the fern tunnel. His words echoed behind him, sending shivers through the clan.